Hello YouTube, this is Patrick God and welcome to this little entity framework core tutorial. In the next couple of minutes, I will show you how well you can use pagination with entity framework core and .NET 6, so EF core 6. It is. Well, you've read the title, so you know what you can expect from here. Important to note is that I will not show you how I created the complete project, meaning Entity Framework is already installed. We've got a data context. We've got a connection to SQL Server. We seeded some data, which are some products in essence. And uh, with all that base code, with all that boilerplate, we then create a controller method where we will then use pagination or implement pagination with Entity Framework. Now, if you don't know how to install Entity Framework and, well, write all that boilerplate code, of course, this is a push to GitHub, so you can have a look there or check out the info card here for the complete web API tutorial in uh, .NET 6 with Entity Framework and SQL Server. There you will see, in essence, how everything is done. And now, before we start, if you like this video and learned something, please consider subscribing to my channel and maybe clicking the like button it does make a difference thanks a lot for that and don't forget to also click the bell icon to get a notification when a new video is uploaded maybe you also want to subscribe to my newsletter I promise won't spam you at most i send an email once a week with videos like this one you get early access to these videos you can also get early access to upcoming online courses maybe also free access to them and i'm planning on creating some ebooks so if this is something for you maybe you want to check out the newsletter and last but not least thank you so so much for supporting me with some coffees really need that it is already pretty late so uh, with coffee i am able to make all these videos okay enough about that now let's start with the tutorial all right real quick a short overview of this solution here we created or I created a web API project, web API only with .NET 6. As you can see here, we get the typical example weather forecast controller. With that, we've got our program CS here, the weather forecast model and so on. And now important for this tutorial here is the data context here. We created this data context uh, for, well, all the entity framework implementations of course and uh, here i think the uh, important part is that we first have a data uh, a db set a database set um, meaning we have a products table and you can also see the products table here in uh, uh, in SQL Server Management Studio, pretty small table with only two columns, ID and the name. So we've got products and we will use pagination with these products here. We've got the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Ready Player One and so on. Lots of cool stuff, Matrix, Resurrections. So excited to see this, but I think I will not see this in a theater. So um, yeah, guess I have to wait. Couple of, well, weeks, months, I don't know. But this is totally off topic, so let's see. Um, we've got some products, and this is the corresponding model here. So we've got a name, we've got an ID, we've got a name. I uh, should have added a string empty here, maybe. But anyways, this is not that important for this tutorial. In the app settings JSON file, we've got our connection string. You've already seen the database a couple of seconds ago. We added a migration here so that we get this new table with some data inserted. And then the last thing I guess that is important is the program CS where we add the DB context and use SQL Server. Okay, so this was really, really quick. And now the next step is, well, I would create a controller not with a service, just a controller. When you watch my other videos, you know that I tend to use a better practice with services and the repository pattern, at least in my courses, and sometimes also in these uh, tutorials here on YouTube. But to make this quicker and save your time, I would just add a new controller here and put all the logic in there. We create an API controller that's, that is empty. Uh, I really, really like these because it's the best way to learn actually and you do not get code that you actually don't want to get. So let's create this product controller here. 
And to get the products now from our database, first we need a constructor, of course. So in here now we add the data context or inject the data context. And uh, oh, that was the wrong key. That's what I wanted. We create and assign the field context. And then we create our new method here. This is correct. Uh, we This is a get call in essence. And this would look like that public async task. But I would like to call this or set the return type to an action result with a list of products. And we call this get products maybe. And in here now, we need another angle bracket and now this works and in here we set our products to await context products to list async what's the problem here um, just a sec in the data context yeah the access modifier is missing and now this works and now back to the product controller. So that's what we want. Of course, we can add a null check here. So if the context products are null, we return a not found, then the warning is gone. And in the end, we return our products. So let's save that and start the app. And then we should see in Swagger, there it is, got our product call try this, execute, we get all our products. All right, so we've got 10, it's not much, but still, of course, we can use pagination here, meaning separating this uh, result into smaller chunks, maybe, and uh, I took this actually from my Blazor e-commerce course, where when you search for a certain product or a couple of products, then uh, you would get not all products, not the complete result, but maybe only two for a page or three, four. Depends on how many you want to see, of course. So we got our products. So this is uh, really the base call here. We get all the products. And now we have to change something, of course. And the thing is now that we won't use the product model itself for the response, we need a new response object, which is a DTO in essence, so a data transfer object that is not mapped to the database. Actually, the product model here is completely mapped uh, to the database. So we've got a table with an ID column and a name, but now we create an object that consists of a list of products and also two more properties, which would be the pages. So the amount of pages, the number of pages we get, or that are available and then also the current page. And then we will return this instead of the list of products here. And we also add a new parameter to this call, which is the page we want to see. So first our DTO, we right click our project and add a new class. And we simply call this maybe product response, you can also call it product response CTO. This is totally up to you, of course. Okay, now the first property here is a list of products. We call this products and we can actually initialize that. So we get no warning and then we've got the number of pages and then also the current page. That's it. Yep, please rebuild this. Okay, so list of products, the number of pages and the current page. And now here in the controller method, we change this a little. First, we've got the page now here. And to be able to use this parameter, we also add the route here. So this would be our page. And this, by the way, is exactly the same as adding a route attribute here with the brackets here and uh, then the curly braces like that. So we just combined the route and the HTTP get attribute here. So we got our page parameter 
And now what we want to do is first we set the number of results we want to see on a page. So let's say we set the page results to three products. Okay, so we get three items on one page. And the next thing already is the page count. We have to calculate that. So page count, almost page count is now math ceiling. And then we access our products. And of course, maybe you don't want to use all your items, products, whatever you want to use here in your application. For instance, in the Blazor e-commerce course, uh, we are not using all the products. We use the pagination for product search. So it would not only be context products, it would be context products where, I don't know, the title consists of the uh, search term or the description has the search term in it and so on. So this is just a quick and dirty example. Uh, but to get the page count, we have to divide this by the page results. Okay, so we got our page results, which is three. Then we've got our page count, which is in essence, the count of the products or all the items we want to see divided by the page results. And we have to uh, use the F here to, well, make this division available in essence, right? So with that, we make this work. Otherwise, this would not work. For instance, if I just remove this, uh, then we see the call is ambiguous between uh, ceiling decimal and ceiling double. So let's add the F here. And then in a minute, we also have to parse some values to an integer. Okay, but now we've got the page results and our page count. And now the products look a bit different. So it is not only to list async. Now we use the methods skip and take. This is crucial and this is actually the whole magic to pagination with entity framework. The skip method, let's have a look, bypasses a specified number of elements in a sequence and then returns the remaining elements. So if the user wants to see page one, we bypass no products, no elements. But with page two, for instance, we bypass the page results, in essence, the number of items we want to see, uh, page three, then six items in this case, and so on. So we have to add a little, little formula here, page minus one times the page results. And here, as you can see, we have to parse this to an integer. And with that, this uh, now works. We skip the number of items uh, we want to or we don't want to see on the current page. Okay, and then from that, we say we take returns a specified number of contiguous elements from the start of a sequence. So we take int page results. So from that from the skipped stuff why the semicolon I don't know from the skipped elements then we take a certain number of elements and this is then the page results so I hope this makes sense first we skip a certain number of elements again when we saw when we want to see page uh, one then we skip no item at all. When we want to see page two, two minus one, we skip three items, page three, then six items. And then from that, we take a certain amount of elements. All right, and now we need our result object. Of course, we don't want to return the products. Now the products are part of our product response. So now what we're gonna do is, well, just a sec, of course, we could also return only the products. This would totally work. But the thing is, if you want to use this in uh, 
fr in, in, in your front end. For instance, if you're creating a Blazor application, again, I have to uh, mention the e-commerce e course because this is where we do this. And then the front end needs some information on uh, which page we are, for instance. What is the current page and how many pages do we have? And with these information, then uh, we can add some buttons, for instance, to make the next call, to get the next page. And this is why I added this product response object here. Uh, so this, um, I hope this makes sense now. Otherwise, of course, when we just test this with Swagger, uh, then we can add any page and get the proper results, but you cannot really work with that without the other information, right? Makes sense, I guess, I hope. I don't know, tell me in the comments if uh, this is just total nonsense, I don't know. So now for the response, what we do is we create a new product response and we use the object initializer here to set first the products, of course. And then we've got the current page, which is the page, and then the pages, which is the page count. Again, cast this to an integer. And then here in the end, we return our response. Okay, I think a, a recap is not necessary. I told you enough about the skip and take methods, I guess. So let's have a look at Swagger again. There we are, yes, there we are. We've got our page parameter here now. So remember, we've got 10 elements, 10 items, 10 products, and now we get these three, this works. We've got four pages, this is right as well. And the current page is one. And now we can, in essence, just skip through. So page two, page three, page four has only one item left. What about page five, for instance? No item at all. All right, this is great. This works and this is the whole magic. All right, that's it. Pretty easy, right? We have to use the skip and take methods, but there is a little thought process in these implementations. And that's why I wanted to make this tutorial for, well, a long time actually. And now it is here. So I hope you learned something. If so, again, please click the like button and maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for that. It does make a difference. Also, maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter to get free access, early access and uh, free eBooks uh, with that. Again, I write an email at most once a week. And last but not least, again, thank you very, very much for all your coffees, guys. Really need that to stay awake when my son is asleep. And maybe you want to, well, donate with the coffee too. Would really appreciate that. So thank you very, very much. And uh, as always, again, thank you very much for watching. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.